And what I've also seen, and, and maybe Bobby, you can help me with this. There's always been a difficulty in discerning the difference between. I mean, we we know what a what a what a a fundamentalist, radical, white identity identity extremist is. We know what that is. That racist is clear. What's been hard for us is being able to discern good white people from passive aggressive white racists. The covert racists. The one that we're willing to do business with. He might see the opportunity to make money off of you but he wouldn't change or trade places with you if helping you would mean losing his status in the world he he wouldn't trade that so i was like for the mansion series we have to do a show that addresses this topic get to your phone lines right now the number to dial is 323-230-4610 that's 323-230-4610 tonight's topic we waiting on Corey to come through Corey holcomb tonight's topic how should black men do business with the turn the blind eye racist a more in-depth look at how black men should do business with seemingly non-racist white people. The good white folk. Now you already know, I got rules. Some banal is one of my rules. Some, but not all. Right. We're not speaking in absolutes. You can't say, or can you? Put it on the floor. 3, 2, 3, 2, 30, 40, 6, 10. Can't say all, quote unquote, white folk evil, right? Somebody call me and dispute if you can or can't. Somebody call me, 323-230-4610. I'm going to put it in front of the brothers in a second after I run these questions down. Is passive aggressive racism worse in business than regular racism because it's harder to see, harder to detect? I like this brother for his skills, but personally, I don't care for him as a person. Should that even matter? Hmm? Part of our inability to rise as a people is the belief that white opportunities are the most coveted opportunities, are the most valuable opportunities, are the most beneficial opportunities, the most life-changing opportunities. Who wants to argue against it? Are black opportunities amongst black people? I'm talking about business opportunities. Are those opportunities better opportunities or less than what the white man can offer you? 323-230-4610, call me right now. We want to know your thoughts. Is passive aggressive racism in the workplace, in business? Gosh. Is it, is it harder to detect than regular racism? Clem and them sitting on the porch with the Confederate flag cleaning the shotgun. You know what they about. But your boss who looks you in the face and says, I love you or I appreciate you. And smiles in your face and pats you on the back, but yet has internal contempt for you. And will try to undermine you at every step of the way. True or false? Most black people pay attention to the white radical identity extremist more than they do the seemingly non-racist white person that most black people are willing to do business with for the black man he'll say it's not about black and white it's about green in that situation 
But green, the money, the dollar bill, is an instrument of racism. People, the people, the people don't. There's a difference between currency and money. That's another discussion. Yeah. White folk got money. You got currency. Currency is for social mobility, being able to move through society fluidly. That's what money's for. Or currency is for. Money is for the accumulation of power. There's a difference between a dollar in your pocket, which is a debt instrument, and some gold. Some land. Some institutions. Today's topic, man, we're going to go in. Can you do business in a white space with Oh, God, with a black politics blind spot and a belief that you're different. In other words, you got a lot of black people that do business in white spaces that are totally blind to black politics. That are totally blind to the black condition in America. You know how many black people don't know the real data on the wealth gap? The wealth gap is just only one gap. There's a technological gap. There's an educational gap. You hear me talk about uh, Stanford University doing the research on stereotype threat. What they also understand is through standardized testing that African Americans are fully four years behind in educational development than their white counterparts. What does that mean? Come on in here, Corey. What does that mean? That means with the same degree, two bachelors, the white person has a better grasp of mathematics, of English, of all the fundamental, uh, uh, the fundamental classes and courses. Four years ahead of the average black person. Let's get everybody in this shot. <laughs> do, do the research. Stereotype threat out of Stanford University. Because of standardized testing. Oh, hell. <laughs> How do you do business... With a passive aggressive white racist. He don't seem racist. He talked to your son when your son come into the job. Hey, you getting big there, Shaquan. Come to one of your games. <laughs> I'm trying to understand, y'all. No, Bobby, you can't mess with that volume over there. That's all over here. Then you got it. We got to set you up with a with a with a splitter, Bob. You can't move over there. All that's off limits. <laughs> Use that, Bobby. Bobby over here messing with stuff. You see me just chew this man out. <laughs> ah, today's topic: How should black men do business with the turn? The Blind Eye Racist, a more in-depth look at how black men should do business with seemingly non-racist white people. They don't seem racist. Phone lines are open. Number to dial 323-230-4610. Wow. Well, in the building today, we got the homies. We got good people in the building. Herbalist. Author, intellect, law master. Come on, man. I got to give him his. My brother, Tahuti Maad Ra, he did Hidden Colors 5 with me. And we re we filmed our segment on the same day, right? That's right. That's right. Hidden Colors 5 is on fire right now, ain't it? Yes, it is. All right. Talk to him. Tell him how they can find you, brother. Yes, it is. Tahuti Maad Ra, you guys can find me on Twitter. Under the handle DMR Herbs, 
which is going to point you to my main site, which is tahutimatraherbs.com. That is my name, D-J-E-H-U-T-Y-M-A-T-R-A, M-A-A-T-R-A, herbs, H-E-R-B-S.com. There we go, and then we got Corey Holcomb in the building. Hey, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 ah, there we got Corey Holcomb in the Lord have mercy, Jesus. <laughs> What's up, Zo? I'm good, man. Pull that mic over to you, brother. Yeah, it'll, it'll come on over there, man. I was inspired yesterday to create to like fully develop this topic because something was said during your show. At the beginning, 5150 show, Tuesday nights, something was said at the beginning of the show, and I was like, God damn, we got to talk about that. And I basically said, I basically said in the show, I said, black people too focused on the, 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 the extreme white racist, the one that's going to go into a mall and shoot everybody or go into a church in North Carolina and shoot everybody. We we're more concerned with him. But we will still do business with passive aggressive white racists in the business sphere. Look what just happened to LeBron's agent. What's his name, Bobby? Rich Paul. Rich Paul. The NCAA just did a Kareem Abdul Jabbar move on his ass. Because him and LeBron reshaping the league. So you know what the NCAA did? They said, okay, agents got to have bachelor's degrees. Now on the surface, as Tone Talks breaks down, that shit don't look racist. Right. But they know the numbers. Of black males in America, only 16% of black males in America have bachelor's. So also, know. <laughs> in other words, go for the sucker shit. Do you see? That limits what he's able to do, right? Okay, you got to have a bachelor's if you want to interface in this level, in this business. They did the same shit to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar when he was at UCLA. Same shit. Came out of New York. Transcendent player. Fucking alien compared to who he was playing against. You know what the NCAA said? Okay, outlaw Duncan. Yep. No more Duncan. And they outlawed it for nine years. Yep. No more Duncan. But what they didn't understand was shit made him better. Because right. he developed the sky hook, the most unstoppable shot in the history of the league. Bobby, I'm coming to you first. How do we do business with white people that might be unconscious in their racism. Um, it's not personal. It's business. And if you are in a position where you can enrich yourselves and the people that you care about, it'll be reflective in what you do with those uh, those material resources. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the only thing I can think to do is be pragmatic about it because at the end of the day, how you get it becomes less important as what you do with money. Mm. Interesting. Corey, I see you. I see what that. Look. Interesting means, though. You be <laughs> slick as hell. No, because I see Bobby. Bobby is the one that's slick now. <laughs> <laughs> that answer. That answer slick, Bobby. Well, well, break down the slick part of it so I, I know what you're referring to. I'm saying. We here in America, Mm -hmm. we got to eat. We got to do business. We don't have the same amount of resources as white men do. And typically, the game-changing opportunity comes from an oppressive hand. Mm. How do we do business with a hand That's going to turn on you eventually. That same hand that's offering the opportunity is usually the same hand that's tearing down what you built up with it. 
How do you do business with them, Bobby? You do business with them out of necessity and a sense of consciousness. And by that, I simply mean once you have the money in your hands, (laughs) you have an opportunity to do with it what you will. Now, eventually, we tend to give that same piece of paper right back to the same people that will take their money Mm -hmm. and oppress you with it. Are they are they oppressing us with money? Money allows them to oppress there us. There we go. I just wanted clarity. I just wanted you to go deeper, brother. I love it. Corey? This motherfucker in here eating hot Cheetos. Is he <laughs> is he oppressing himself? I don't know. <laughs> Look, you sit next to the herbologist right here. I need this brother. <laughs> Corey, your thoughts. All right. There are principles that cannot be compromised if you are where you're supposed to be mentally. Mm. They cannot be compromised because they will they will basically put you back out there with what I call average folk. Just a motherfucker who will go for anything and say, I did it cause. Mm. So what I'm saying... When you are dealing with these people, this is what happens. Whatever happened for them to want to deal with you, that should be that should be a better way to say it. If they mm. want to deal with you, you have some service that, service that they see a value. Mm. If they're talking to you, if you decide <laughs> to do business with them, what I want you to know is this. There's going to be a time where you're either going to Fold to their will, Mm-mm. or you're going to have to stand on what you're supposed to stand on, mm. and they're going to notice that. Mm. If you can get them to still do business with you after you show them I am this and I stand on it, that not only means that you are stepping towards manhood, you a bad motherfucker. You a cold Because if they still want to deal with you after you show them, I am a man, and this will not be crossed, then you got something to really bargain with. Mm. That's that's Clarence Avon. You saw the Black Godfather uh, documentary on Netflix? Talk to me. I don't know about it. Oh, man, you would love that. Yeah. Clarence Avon, you would love that. That motherfucker was... He wasn't gonna bend to their will, and I'm they not, and they wind up appreciating him because he was a man. Well, they still had envy. Oh, I'm, they don't like that. Yeah, but I'm saying when you're dealing with them people, who you are is going to come into play, and they're mm. gonna watch you if you fold because mm. they're not stupid, <laughs> and that's how they get their little jollies. I'm ahead mm. of him. He's over here kissing my ass. He's going against everything that he knows is right for his money. What happens when you do that? What does that do to them? What do they see? Is that like blood in the water? It is blood in the water. And they let them know that you will play ball. They know if something goes wrong because you want this money so bad and you scared Mm. to tell them, fuck you, I ain't with that. They go get you when something go wrong so you can calm the people down. Mm. Whether it be on TV, whether it be at work in the cafeteria, you know what I'm saying? Dealing with Caucasian people business-wise is demoralizing if you are a person of morals because we know how they get down. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying there is no – you ain't got no business talking to them motherfuckers. But if we dealing with them, you have to let them know, listen – Okay, I'm the worst motherfucker in the world for even dealing with you no matter what. That's one thing you need to realize. It ain't no, oh, we just doing work. No, these the motherfuckers that killed your people. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? They killed your people and continue to kill your people. So if you're dealing with them, something wrong with you. And I just got back in bed with people and I know something wrong with me. But (laughs) I'm hoping... I can get enough money before they challenge who I am and I had to tell them, 
fuck all you motherfuckers. I don't get down like that because I know it's coming. Mm. It's coming. Mm. So that's what you got to be prepared for when you're dealing with them. Tahuti Maat Ra. Your thoughts? I think it's twofold. I'm getting text messages about your Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's twofold. I think you have the masses as a consumer, but then you also have the entrepreneur, the business owner also. Mm. Okay, and, and in certain respects, as a consumer uh, purchasing um, raw materials, I think that the entrepreneur is going to be more in a position to reject that passive aggressive racist once he or she finds out that that is the case mm. more so than, you know, your street level, your grassroots level consumer. Mm hmm. Now, I went to Delaware a couple of years ago to purchase a tea machine for my business. And the dude, white dude, straight up racist. Mm. And the first thing he told me is that I don't like black people. I don't like Hispanics. I don't like Asian. Strangely, his wife was Asian. Mm. And, you, you know, he was just straight up. But I ended up talking to him for like five hours. And it was a trip because he wanted to. He wanted to continue doing business with me. He said I was different from the others, you know, <laughs> the other of our, of our people. Mm -hmm. But once I found out that dude's position, it was a wrap. Now, I paid for the machine, so I, I took the machine. But after that, it was a wrap. Mm -hmm. But everybody may not be in my position to do what I did. So you're saying entrepreneurialism gives you a little bit more it freedom. It gives you a little bit more freedom. It does. You have more options. See, I'm a herbalist. So I have the, the globe. I have China open to me. I have Africa open to me. I have Japan open to me. I have Thailand open to me. Indonesia. Big difference. You see, now the grassroots consumer doesn't have those options. Mm. Now, if the consumer finds out that... A retailer is racist. Now, this is just my opinion. This is just my opinion, no matter what it is. I don't think that that person should continue to do business with a known racist. We get back to this whole Steve Harvey Monique type of thing and this integrity. Uh-oh. Integrity falls under psychic income. See, there's two types of incomes. There's the physical income, then there's the psychic Say income. more. Say more. Explain. It, it, it's, it's too, uh, for example, most people will accept a job for the money and not how they feel from the job. So I got this new job. I'm making sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000, but I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. I'm overworked. The environment is racist sexes or what have you so i'm not happy yeah the money is good the pay is good but i don't feel good ah i don't even like coming to this motherfucking all due honesty but i do because of the cheese because i have to all day long you, you see so you to. so you become imbalanced for a lot of people yeah you know, for the masses of the people yeah. so you become imbalanced you see and i tell people that in order to be truly paid which is the physical income and the psychic income, you have to enjoy what you're doing. Now, what Corey was alluding to about you don't have to, that's choice. And people do have a choice. Now, I do understand circumstances, but circumstances are also predicated upon choice. If you don't like your circumstances, then you can make choices to change your circumstances. Got a whole nother question for all three of y'all. I need everybody's opinion coming to Bobby first. When Malcolm did, Malcolm X, when he did that damn speech at one of those universities, I don't know which one it was, and the white woman walked up to him after it was over, I don't know if that was real or fake, because you know Spike was adding shit in the movie. That but was legitimate. That was legitimate. That was very legitimate. When the woman walks up mm -hmm. to him and asks him, well, what can a person like mm -hmm. me, what can a white person do? I understand the struggle and whoop, whoop, whoop. And he was very matter of fact and cold. What did he say, Bobby? He told her, go amongst your people. Well, yeah, no, what did he say? Nothing. There you go. Yeah. He said nothing. So the spike part is. That, that's accurate. 
Okay. He, he wasn't evil when he said it. So my question is, that's what I was about to ask. Is that the way to do business today in America? But see, Malcolm changed because Malcolm later on <clears throat> admitted that he was wrong back then. Malcolm was speaking from the level that he was on. That's he, fair. He, th- that's, now, a, that's a fair assessment. And, and, this, and, this, is, and this, is actual, this is factual. So Malcolm grew in scope. He grew in perspective. And Malcolm realized, like the Black Panther Party, that white people can play a role, but they have to play that role amongst themselves go amongst your people and help to enlighten them on the situation Corey, your your response to that there are things you have to do as a man that is it's so hard to get done and it's not nothing in particular only you know what you have to do mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. most people won't do it mm. because it's so fucking hard. Mm. I'm coming around to that point. I got you. Once you get through that hard part yeah. that has a light at the end, mm. but it's very hard to go right. through that. Once you get through that, you can handle doing business with anybody mm. because you are there you are prepared you mm-hmm. have been through what you need to go through to be the man that you need to be right that way you can have a conversation with mr feinstein and find a way right. to make it work right. where you're not destroying yourself and everything that you stand for but it, it, but until <laughs> you become a man and go through what you need to go through where you face this world that's right it's like it's when you're dealing with a man and you have you have been through some stuff, you peep it. That's right. Because mm. you can't perpetrate this. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But when you see people like, let me give an example if I'm bold enough to say a name. Say it. When you see people like Barack Obama stand there with the agenda of the enemy. Mm. <laughs> the, mm. And, and stand there and, and 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 act like it's everything at his age. I say to myself, do, do they create robots? Because what man his age can stand there and sell that nonsense to the people mm. who've been through the real shit and know you bullshit? You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So dealing with these people in a way that's productive for yourself and others you represent. You have to be one who has gone through that stage of life that makes you a man. Mm. That's my opinion. Mm. I can't say nothing factual about that because if you ain't been through it, you probably don't even know what I'm talking about. Right. right. That's right. (laughs) But what about what? Okay, so you have black people who are pretty who are who are in this system that are trying to win. I'm coming to Bobby. That are trying to win, that are trying to scratch their way up and make a living and and get up the ladder. And I'm talking. Now I'm not talking about. A blue collar worker or a white collar worker. There's no way up in the system, so I ain't trying to cut you off. Just There's let me no s- way <laughs> up in the system. Let me set it up though, because I know you there. I know. But you, you what if what if you got those kind of people, and they say the world is getting smaller, technology is making the world smaller, and now you got to work with different people. Even on the entrepreneurial level, there's a certain level of your business that, okay, I might want to take it to the next level. And different relationships bring different resources. They bring different opportunities. How then do you vet people outside of your own race and elevate them to a trusted position in your inner circle when trying to elevate your business? Bobby? Well, the trust issue... Is secondary to the outcome, and I and I'm gonna be redundant in that sense. If you have in your mind a purpose, and this opportunity enables you to take care of not only your immediate family, but the people that you would love to have the uh, the resources to sow into. Mm. So, if that's the exchange that has to be made. And you firm in your understanding mm-hmm. 
of why you're doing that, the probability of success goes up. Now, so you're basically saying you should just be about your family no, and securing no, their security. No, Is that what no, you're saying? I'm saying it's got to be bigger than just you and your family because you need to be building capacity. Because therein lies the leverage. If you have developed a habit that other people can see mm-hmm. what you do with what you have, mm-hmm. they're more likely to create a movement that has momentum, that affects the kind of change. If you're driven by effect and change, then you stay right in that lane. And whoever you got to deal with, as long as Corey mentioned earlier that you're doing it from a position where you already know you got a small window. Mm-hmm. And if you can get those resources before that window closes, they are yours to do what you will. And that's what's important. Wow. System. Bobby, it, it, oh, go ahead. Bad. No, go ahead, Court. No, I was saying the system is sh- set up to shut down those windows. They mm-hmm. make it up as they go. Rich Paul and LeBron James frustrated the people in power. So what they do... It's their power. It's their system. We're going to write something that makes it where you have another obstacle now, sir. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That is the true. The police. Oh, okay. Murder you because they know we have a system set up that justifies me doing whatever to you. Like when people say, I know my rights and everything. I'm like, you don't because if you did, you wouldn't say that. The police justify the people who are in charge of the police. They the same. They the mothers and fathers of them motherfuckers who shooting up the malls. Mm. They are going to write something that's set up for you not to be able to excel in whatever the fuck you're doing. That's what I was saying. You got a small window. Before they come in. Rich Paul them was there for a little while. They observed it. They say, oh, we're about to write legislation. (laughs) Because we know them. We didn't did the history on them and everything. We ain't ready to kill them yet. We just gonna make it where they can't do this without going through our system. Bobby has a retort. It's not so much a retort, but uh, an addition to the conversation. Rich Paul gained so much power that the move that he made in anticipation of them, you know, closing down um, that opportunity for him is he has now positioned some of the young kids he deal with outside of that framework. They're going overseas. Are they? They're playing. Are they taking uh, allotments from companies like Reebok? Uh, intern. This one kid got a million dollar internship to not go to. Uh, college at all Mm -hmm. so he therefore qualifies next year to go straight into the NBA without that agent bullshit that he just threw in the way Mm -hmm. we just have to continue to look for best practices because there's some brothers and sisters out here that have always been able to maneuver they set up obstacles that make it harder for you to live for those kids to have to go overseas Mm -hmm. and do all of the stuff that they do it's not right it's not right. It's in fact, it's flat out wicked. I went to the Rose Bowl game. I saw that they had these packages, Bobby. Well, the white people who can afford it, they come to the game. They got food and drinks set up in the back. They got a little VIP pass. Mm-hmm. They pay like fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollars for these tickets. Shit, me and you, we wouldn't buy that. Right. You get what I'm saying? Right. If the kids get a dime, whoever gave them a dime get in trouble. The kids get in mm. trouble. You remember they took games from LeBron when he was in high school over a jersey at a store. Mm. I'm trying to say this. This is what I'm coming around to say. You're in a war zone with motherfuckers that don't want you to have shit. Mm. I didn't believe that until I moved to California. Mm. I'm from Chicago. It's a segregated city. I've mm. never been around white people. Mm. But... Now that I have spent time around them and done business with them, I have figured it out. They don't want you to have shit. (laughs) But they will give something to the one who will turn to others Mm -hmm. 
against their own. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So when you see people in power, the first thing you should say is, how did you get that in that system? Is YouTube pushing or changing the goal line when they create algorithms to prevent content creators from getting paid? Or when they prevent certain languaging? Hmm? I mean, I had an answer. I just don't want to hog out the show. Yeah, I'm with it. This is what we're doing. We have a man talk. I'm going to get everybody in here. So go ahead. You got an answer? Go ahead. YouTube is set up where you will not get rich on this, no matter what you create. And trust me, a lot of people are watching YouTube more than they watching television because it's the closest thing you can get to the truth. Television, you can't even say the truth on television. (laughs) They shut all that down. (laughs) To get a show on TV, you have to be a sucker. And that's not me saying, I'm not knocking nobody who's doing television, but I'm saying television has a lot of politics to it where, you know, if you make movies, you might be able to get a movie where you get a chance right. to say something. Right. But in television, yep. it is a filter where all of that has to go through, and they're just not going to let you take over. What was the name of that? Um, Luke Cage. No, yeah. no we're not no. going to let this take over our network. No. Black Jesus. No, we're not going to let that right. take over our network. And these shows were doing good. Yeah. It's just yeah. they don't want you to have it. Mm. I figured that out since I've been out here in California. The Caucasian people in charge do not allow you to prosper yeah. to the point where you can do something. But we'll let you make a little money and hold you up. You see what what's the name did? Do like him. <laughs> we got him in our pocket. <laughs> He'll do whatever we want him to do. Tootie. I agree with uh, Corey. We have to understand, though, that America has been set up in a way for us to fail. That's our history here in the United States from day one. When you look at Reconstruction, which was supposed to be that time to allow black people to be enfranchised, look at everything that happened. We invested our money into the Freedmen's Bank. $1.2 billion in today's Terms, financial terms, 1.2 billion. These are people who just came out of slavery. A billion dollars. And within 10 years, that bank had folded. White men owned it, they held it, they managed it, and took every dime and invested it into railroad stocks and got rich. And what did the black folks get? Nothing. But they asked what? Nothing. Mm. So when we talk about enfranchisement, man, you have. Back then, you had laws, black laws on the books that said black folks couldn't do this, couldn't do that. And this is pertaining to enfranchisement. You didn't have access to the to the courts. You didn't have access into business, the general business of society. You didn't have access into anything. Now, that that was a blessing and a curse in one respect. See, the blessing is, and I know a lot of people can't get with this today, but the blessing was, see, for me, segregation was a blessing. Mm. See, you had separate but unequal. See, we focus on the integration, that segregation part, when we should have focused on the equality, having equality within the black community because we paid our tax dollars. Now, come on, brother. When we look at the GI Bill, right? That helped these white boys when they got back from uh, from the war, right. World War II, the GI Bill, to help them to go to college, to get better jobs, to make more money, to get better houses in the suburbs, which were new back then. They got all these benefits, medical benefits. Mm-hmm. And the black folks didn't get anything. And we were talking about this earlier and how they do it. Like, they don't come out, right? Like, you're black, you can't have this. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay... We got to be very strategic in our racism. <laughs> so it's like, okay, now we want to benefit the white folks and the new immigrants that we're going to make honorary white people, the Jews, the Italians, the Irish. But the blacks, we want to keep them back. We don't want them to have wealth. So what we will do with our GI Bill and other forms of social affirmative action, which was for white folks only, is we're going to reward certain people based upon their occupation. Because you can also control, manipulate through occupation. See, white folks have certain occupations that we as black people don't have and didn't have. So with the GI Bill, if you were a cook, 
oh, you didn't qualify for that. Mm. If you were a porter, you didn't qualify for that. Mm. If you were a bellhop, you didn't qualify for the GIB. Now, you paid your taxes. Wow. We're going to take your black dollars, and we're going to funnel it to D.C., and then we're going to funnel it to white America Mm. to benefit from. But you, black folks, you will not benefit from it. Now, we're going to take your money. See, this is what we say in law. No taxation without representation. Right. We have a history of that. And these Negroes today that you see talking about reparations, none of those Negroes bring that up. That's a legitimate, and I'm deviating, but that's a legitimate claim. But it well, ties into what I'm, yeah. what, I'm talk, what I'm talking about. You see, so when we look at the GI Bill and the Mineral Rights Bill and the Homestead Act, the Southern Homestead Act, the Federal Highway Act, all these acts, these are forms of social affirmative action for white people that kept us out. And this is documented. Mm. This is what I'm into right now. So, brother, who do, it, it's, w- would you say this? Whatever they talking about, it's always a hoax. Oh, right. abs- oh absolutely. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, I don't know how people fall for it. <laughs> I, I, I don't even waste my time with the, with the craziness. Okay, because these people promised you reparations back in 1865, in December of 1865, and they didn't give it to you then. Now, Mr. Lincoln, he promised you 40 acres and a mule. For every four African, 40 acres and a mule. Well, he got shot in the head, assassinated, but nevertheless, you know, the the, the plan was still on the table. So when that time came, what happened to the 40 acres and a mule? White folks said, we got something better for you guys. We gonna let y'all work for three years. Pay y'all some wages and you can buy your own land. Mm. Now, how the hell is that a deal? When we're supposed to be given the 40 acres and a mule for past work mm. that we were never paid for. You mean I owe you, but I have a great way to pay you. Yeah, exactly. And that is to employ you. Exactly. It's like you do with your kids that you pay child support for. When they come over, you make them do the chores. And the <laughs> I have to pay for you. What type of shit is that? <laughs> I, I've already worked for the land. Right. Okay, and so uh, okay, and so here we go. And so we do it. We, you know us. We do it for three years, and then what happens in 1874? The goddamn bank collapsed, mm. and you end up with zero. You just got screwed in the ass for being a slave for 400 something years. And then 10 years later, in your enfranchisement, we're going to screw you again. Insult to injury. Wow. Same thing with the Moses Bank. Same thing with every, with every other bank. If you have one eighth African blood in you, the bank, by law, which was a flawed law, by law, had the right to cancel your damn contract. So you go set up a bank account. You don't read the contract. And after a couple of months, after you got hundreds of dollars in savings, they get to close your damn account and keep the damn money. And because you're disenfranchised, you have no legal standing. So this is what Corey's talking about, controlling things. Black Panther Party, pick up guns. What do you do? You change the law. Change the law. Change. That's moving the goalposts. You, you see? Bobby? That's deep, brother. You got the facts. He got the facts. That's why he here. I just figured it out. Tahuti Mod Ra. He That's in the, the building. years of being destroyed. That's right. It's like, systematic. Well, you know what this is? It's systematic. Bobby G, yeah. get in here, Bobby. For perspective, uh, beginning in 2035, the number of young people reaching working age in Africa will exceed that of the rest of the world combined. And by 2050... One out of every four people on the planet Earth will be African. Mm. And the reason that becomes important when we look at the fertility of our, 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 our current situation, it has everything to do with how short-sighted we have become. And, and when we look at it in that uh, right now context, it looks very, very bleak. Very bleak. Because everything that has been said today has already been enacted. They gave and they took. They gave and they took. It comes down to what is it that we're doing or what it is that we're thinking about doing that could affect change that's sustainable. I like that. That could affect change that's sustainable. Well, when I look at the sustainability portion of your question, I think we still here. Well, if we still here, that means we've sustained We've weathered, right? We're weathering this system. The change that needs to happen 
is broken down in, in several different categories. A rejection of beliefs. A rejection of them as an authority over us. A rejection of their opportunities. See, again, in our community, we so poor. Their community, uh, their opportunities look like unicorns. This is look at the look at the NCAA. They robbing these kids. It's a slave system. And they still telling these kids as they're recruiting them, be happy you have this opportunity. Uh, right? Like, can, can we be honest? Sure. They, they, they pimping them on, across the board. Video games, merchandise, ticket sales, uh, uh, television deals. Them kids ain't getting none of that. They say, well, wait a minute. Your education is equivalent to... To the billions we rake in annually. Wait a minute. That's bullshit. UCLA is a public school. What are you talking about? Well, Well, this changes how you you live normally. You should be thankful. Can I use an example uh, of the antidote for the stuff that we're talking about right now? I remember watching um, Jerry Cooney fight Larry Holmes. Now, the rules are supposed to be the same. But they weren't applied the same. Jerry Cooney was breaking the rules every time he hit that man below his belt, which was about 50 times. Yeah. And Larry kept looking at the referee to adjudicate the situation, and he realized that the referee ain't seen none of this. And if he did, he wasn't applying the law to his benefit or fairly. So what did Larry Holmes do? What we've had to do in many instances, yeah. and I say, fuck the rules. Right. I'm going to take the rules into my own hand and whoop this motherfucker's ass and get this shit over his with. his ass, too. <laughs> because he was behind on the scorecards. Yeah. Had the fight went the distance, he would have lost the, the fucking decision. Yeah. And when he found out after the fight was over with, he said, y'all got to be out y'all goddamn mind. He done won how many rounds? But, it's a good thing I knocked this motherfucker out. But you know what your answer is really alluding to for black people as a solution? Adaptation. That's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. We're going to change the rules. Your ass don't get the dunk no more. But you're not going to stop me. You you're not going to stop me. But he had to adapt and create because something he, new. He's, you're not going to stop we me. Because we capable of that. But yes, check this out. talk on that. Here go the scary shit. I believe. Let me say that one more time. I believe. <laughs> a lot of people who are alive today in America, I'm talking about black people, are in a slumber mode. Mm, yeah. The reason they're in a slumber mode is because they're not warmongers. But they know what we have to do in order to make this world safe for people like us. And that is, my is going to be like, Corey, you bugging. But that's the truth. <laughs> got to destroy them motherfuckers. That is the only way that you and your family, your children, your lineage, everything can get back on course is if the people who are in charge are not in charge no more. And how are they not going to be in charge no more? You know what you got to do. <laughs> it's depressing thinking about it. It's people out here who want to live their lives yeah. to achieve so much. But the truth is, there's something wicked that is in control of everything, and it must be taken down. Mm. And that's not what's being preached. Mm. What's being preached is finding a way to fix it with them. If you are a man who is over 40 years old and got common sense, you see, ain't no fixing shit with them. Mm. They're going to fuck you over as long as they're in charge. They're going to shoot in police. I mean, they're going to shoot in cars with a baby in the back, kill the male driver, and nothing happened to the police officer. Yeah. They're going to choke out a man on the street and nothing happened to the police officer. But they taking these mass murderers in custody. And it's no coincidence why it's happening. The, the Caucasian folks are in charge. As long as Caucasian folks are in charge, you're never going to get what you're supposed to get. And if you don't believe me, okay, that's your opinion. But 
This hasn't come from extensive research. This comes from what God gave me. It's called common sense. Because I, I wasn't around them until I grew yeah. up. Yeah. But now I'm around them. I'm like, oh, these motherfuckers are everything my grandmother and all them people told me they were. Because I used to be like, no, it ain't like that. And we can figure it out. I would love to figure it out. Because that's without violence. But these motherfuckers, man, they need they need... They need their wig split. That's just keeping it real. <laughs> <laughs> they need their wig split so they can respect who you are. So now I, I, I shift to this portion of the conversation. Can you do business in a white space with a black politics blind spot and a belief that you're different? Meaning black politics blind spot. Because we got a lot of millennials who didn't go through what we went through. Right? And a lot of millennials growing up have no idea of the the true struggle. So they have a black politics blind spot. Most black people vote skin color. They don't vote policy, right? For instance, Barack Obama, overwhelmingly popular, probably one of the most popular, if not the most popular president ever. And you see what they gave you right after his ass. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> don't go with that. Yeah, but, but a lot of people, <laughs> and you got a lot of black people out there who will admit I blo- voted for him because he was a black man. Period. But his policies look like George W. Bush. And Ronald Reagan. And Ronald Reagan. Hey, wait a minute. There's nothing in your policy that deals with us directly well no I'm the president of everybody right wait a minute white people running around here as presidents doing shit just for them let's not play games right redlining in real estate is for them redlining is basically saying I don't give a fuck how hard you work for this money black man you cannot live inside this demarcated location. Yeah. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how hard you work for it. You can't live here. Your money's no good here. Do you remember, Zoe, when we were at the foxhole and, and, and Jamie Foxx was behind Barack Obama? And I was the only one in the room saying, that's they man. <laughs> Mm. I was like, his black hat, he for them. Yeah. He's going to carry out what they need him to carry out. That's the only reason he's the number one word in the world. Allowed to do that. Mm. To be the president. Exactly. Well, and all, people got mad at me for saying that, but I, that, but that's, just, I say? that's just real. Now, all looking, looking back on everybody, can, you know, well, not everybody, but most people can see, like, damn, we got screwed with this dude. What did you think you were going to get in the first place? How about that, brother? You thought you was going to get something because the man had black skin. He's a puppet, man. That office is the United States Office of the Puppet. Right. <laughs> Period. That's real. Period. But, so to, to your question, it depends on the person. It can be done. Because I had a store here in Lily White, Glendale. And it was popping. Mm-hmm. And even to this day, my clientele, my customer base is 50% black and 50% Caucasian and other to this very day. And that's why I say it depends on the person. Nobody can step to me and say, hey, man, you're a racist, you're a sexist, you whatever, because I come with the facts. You see, when I talk about white supremacy, lynching, what have you, I can come with the facts. When I come with the disenfranchisement versus enfra- en- enfranchisement, I can come with the fact I live in a virtual freaking library. Hmm. Wow. You see? So, Bobby, I see you. Come well, on. One thing, all kinfolk ain't skin folk. But more Ooh. importantly, there's an example that I, I started with earlier today, and that was when you do quality work and you have an exceptional product. Yeah. You can do what you just did. Yeah. I wrote a book uh, several years ago about a man by the name of Leon T. Gar. This man had a third grade education, and he told me, Bobby, I made a million dollars before I could spell a million. Mm. And that debunks the notion that, you know, the only way that you can make it is to have all of these right. de- degrees, you know. And um, Mr. Gar told me, he said, Bobby, if you want to make money, you got to make friends. And here was a man that was able to adapt 
and 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 circumvent the laws that would have otherwise precluded him from becoming a very wealthy man. Always stayed in the black community. He didn't move. He improved, mm. and he brought people up through his success. In other words, he, when he was in contracting, he would turn a guy who was a, a craftsman into an independent businessman. It worked for both of them. Mm-hmm. First, it took him off of his payroll. Mm. Yeah. And the guy had a chance to make more money right. and multiply his successes by being able to go out and, and hire other black folk. And mm. then he hired a white business agent to go into the parts of the uh, town that they wouldn't let a black man do nothing. And them white folk would be shocked when he would roll up at the end of the job and hand them the keys to their house. Mm. The money is already in his hands, and it went through other black people's hands. So what I'm getting at is we just have to be able to think that there is a way around this bullshit if we look for it. We just got to go back to the past because, see, the, the, see the, the blueprint is there. We're disconnected from the past. Now, why is it that when we were segregated, we were balling with the Black Wall Street and with Wilmington and with Allensworth, California? And regardless of the religious persuasion, political persuasion, the bullshit, regardless of all that, we were balling across the land. Now, why is it that we were balling? We were segre- segregated. But now integrated, we got $1.2 trillion GDP, GNP. And we do not have what we had during Jim Crow. Good so point. we have to look at the so-called education and, and the degrees. We have to look at, quote unquote, perks of integration. Because we gave up something in order to get something. That's something that we got. I say it wasn't worth it. Mm. Now, it may be controversial, but I'll say it again. We should have focused more on the equal aspect of separate and equal, or separate but equal. You could stay separate like the Asian people. But, all these but, other- but hold on. I think we missing one crucial point here. Yeah, because what, Bob, what Bobby said, uh, there's a way to do everything. But uh, at the end, when you show up and give them the key, it must feel good as a black man to show him that it was me. But... In order to get it done, he had to stay in seclusion. Mm. And that's what makes this world fucked up. But see, this is why I say, this this is what I'm talking about. This This is what I'm talking about. Go go back to the brother's point. I I, I was just going to, oh, go ahead. Back to your point about, uh, just about what what he said. There was a man named uh, S.B. Fuller. In Chicago. In Chicago. Yeah. Now, this brother took over a Boyer, Boyer International from a white dude. And within several years, the dude was a multimillionaire. Now, he didn't let anybody know that he purchased Boyer. Right. Mm. Multi-million dollar business in Chicago. Exactly. Now, he had a, a, a open house for the employees. They had a convention. This was the first time that people could see that the owner of Boyer International was a black man. Mm. Word got out in the South amongst the white folks. And within one year... Mr. Fuller filed for bankruptcy. So when when he just said it's effed up, it's wicked, there's an example for it. And that's just one example. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I just, met Mr. Gar. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, like, what he did, it's incredible. Yeah. But I, yeah. the way we have to duck and do business around these Quiet. wicked motherfuckers, it ain't right, man. It is not right. But it is necessary. Or it's, it is about, what it is. It is what it is. Because what you, what our long-range view should be, building capacity and being able to do the Larry Holmes kind of thing. All right, y'all want to bring it like that? You're going to change the rule? Well, I, gotta, I done built myself up to the point where if you hurt me, it's going to hurt you. Because we're going to go there. We're going all the way. All the way there. And that includes military options. But and Corey right touched up. on that a minute ago. We don't want to have that discussion. But you remember when that brother was riding around uh, That's, that shooting That lone him? shooter. Yes. But he was trained. He shut this motherfucker down. He had everybody ducking. It don't take an army, army. It just takes strategic action to let folks know. You drop one of us, somebody's falling over on your side. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Mansions on Dash Talk X, premier man cave show. 
Mansions where men get together and build palatial estates from mind power. Mansions. This is what we do every Wednesday, 5 to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, here on Dash Talk X on Dash Radio. Now, as we prefaced earlier, there are no absolutes. There are good white folk in the world. What do they look like, Bobby? How do they act? How do they behave? And I'm talking about a quality of goodness. What uh, is is it in? It, I know it's in some white people. John Brown. What do they look like, Bobby? Talk to me about white folk, good white folk, <laughs> moral white folk, honest white folk. Do they exist, Bobby? And if they do, what do they look like? John Brown. You ever heard of him? No, talk to us, Bobby. That's why you hear repository. John Brown killed his own people mm. in defense of black folks who were not either equipped or prepared to defend for themselves. Mm. And to him, it was just an issue of right and wrong. Now, he, right. he wasn't, he, everybody got spots, but he gave up his life and his children's lives in defense of our right. For sovereignty. So that's the best example I can give you of a white person that is fair minded. That's a Cody? great that's, that's that's a great great example because um John Brown could have took advantage of quote unquote white privilege and exactly. did his thing. Exactly. And he, he sacrificed that uh and his children, as yeah. you said, and paid the ultimate price. They hung him you know, up. They yeah. hung him. You know, it yeah. you would have thought John Brown was a black man, you know. So uh John Brown is a a, a great example. Because of that defense aspect, you know, mm-hmm. so when we start talking about that Hidden Colors 5 and, and, and the art, you know, of African warfare, mm-hmm. that warfare part is very, very, very important. See, it's not like we didn't do anything economically. If you look at Black Wall Street, man, Black Wall Street, man, that, that, that was the paramount <coughs> example, man, of a black economic success, man. That dollar, or- that dollar didn't leave. It, it stayed in our, it circulated three years, mm-hmm. Go ahead, bro. Because I want you to finish this because this is history and people need to hear it. But when we mention Black Wall Street, we also have to mention black economic terrorism. Because that's what it was to the white folk. That that, that was true. That was true. Black Wall Street. I mean, there are hundreds of examples. But what I want to put out there is that. With Black Wall Street, it, it just wasn't us being bombed. You know, the first American city bombed. It mm. wasn't just that. What we don't hear about is that the black men did arm themselves and they did defend. And I'll say attempt because of how the outcome, but they put forth that effort. Let me say that. They put forth that effort. The white folk but, got killed. Yeah. yeah, but here's my thing, though. In a lot of these cases, Rosewood, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Black Wall Street, and others, we did defend. But how can we win? This kind of goes back to what Corey's talking about, the wickedness. How can we win when law enforcement, who has a duty to protect, right, people, law, allegedly, allegedly. jump side with the mob? Law enforcement jumps side with the law right. and deputize criminals right. and join in in the rampage. Wilmington, North Carolina was a ball in black city. And we built that after Reconstruction. Mm-hmm. And when those assholes sold out 1876 and turned the other chick and bounced and left black people to fend for themselves in the South, the Union, so the Yankees bounced on us. The white boys had a field day in Wilmington, mm-hmm. North Carolina. Burn the city down. Uh, during Reconstruction, we had over 1,000 black townships, man, with schools, man. Churches, businesses, so built our homes. We had it. We were balling. We just came out of slavery. I thought we were inferior. So y'all coming with something. Y'all coming with something big here. What I'm starting to see is they'll let you have money so long as you don't shift into using that money to acquire power. Quincy Jones told me this himself. He said, Zo. The hip-hop guys are doing it right. He said they're making money. They putting on their homies. They giving their homies jobs. They putting other homies on. He said, 
but this is the test of if they're going to be around. He said, now that you got the money, you got to step out there to see if your money has any power. Mm. And the moment you start to see if your money got power, that's when you start running into the rules, the boundaries of this system. We go back to segregation, man, because, see, when we look at the, the black leagues in, in baseball, it was our stadiums that were sold out every game. We played at night. To this day, MLB play at night. We played at night because we had to work, and then we would go throw ball, we would play. The, the, the white leagues played in the daytime. But see, mm. in order to get our money, to get the crowds, that's where your, mm. uh, what's his name, uh, Jackie Robinson. Yes, sir. And Satchel Page and all of yes. them started coming over. And then what happens, see, the same thing that happened with segregation. What happens when the black players end up in the MLB? The mm. black league goes, you got the power, man. I say we go back and look at the, the blueprint because it worked. We see it's the defense. Mm. It's the, the we did not have the defense. We had the money, man. We were better off in Jim Crow during Jim Crow than we are now. See, we can do a show and talk about child support and, and the breakdown of the family, what have. But why wasn't that the case, beloved, during Jim Crowism? Why wasn't that the case? Everything we're talking about, we already had, man. The one weak area was the defense. And see, and that's why Hidden Colors 5, man, got him shell-shocked. Mm -hmm. That's why the, the brother is banned. See, if he wasn't in America, they banned him from the USA, too. <laughs> see, it's that warfare, mm. you see. And so what you do is you use an economic base here in America. And then what you have to do is funnel that money to the homeland, different countries, and go there. Because as Corey said, as long as you're here, let me tell you something. White folks not changing up their game for nothing. Like the state of Israel, they will destroy everything inside. They're not giving it up for nothing. Mm. They're not. Mm. Corey Holcomb, your thoughts? Well, I'm saying, like, you want to ask the question again to make sure they understand where I'm coming from. What was the question? Because I was listening to the brother's history lesson. No, you said something about white people. This whole show. The judge, you said something about <laughs> looking for the good white folk or whatever you said. Yes. Are there good white folk? I believe that there are. Because I believe there are no absolutes in the universe. There's That's always right. a variant. You are absolutely right. But so, go ahead. I was I will say this. Everybody out there who trying to judge white folks, please don't make the mistake and judge them off what they say. Watch what they do. And that's how you judge who they are. And don't turn a blind eye to what you want to turn a blind to. Watch their body of work. Because can't nobody fake it forever. Everybody going to show you who they are eventually. You around somebody, you going to see what they're That's about. Right. People will say this, though. Oh, I'm about this. Okay, let me watch you. So, like you said, Zoe, and I, there are no absolutes. But never go off what a motherfucker talking about. Go off what a motherfucker is doing. Then that brings me to this, this point real quick. But, but before I do it. The phone lines are I'm about to open them up. Black Ron just came up in this mug, boy. Back in LA ass Ron. Yeah. Hey, this is Mansions. Tonight's topic is a heavy topic. How do you do business with white people that might be unconsciously racist? That might be passive aggressive racist. Might be covert racist. When I say unconscious, you just learn racist shit to say right. and do and behave through osmosis because that's how you were raised it's your environment right we got to do business if we we got to do business if we want to eat nowadays nowadays you, do you see them. so my question is because I, I believe that there are some good white folk do you know one i know a couple Wow, that's because I asked that question to people. I know, when they I know, said, a, I know the, a few. You the know, you know, you know multiple. Yeah, Caucasian folks who you feel are just. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Doctor Mark Goulston. Wow. Doctor Mark Goulston. Mark Goulston. I, well, <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I'm not around him enough to. I know Doctor G. 
That's a good guy. Okay. I mean, like, Dr. Allen Berger. There's another they, dude. They, they do exist, so they're just not in positions of power to do the right thing. And when they attempt to do it, let me, let they, me, they, they get treated just like us. Let me, get, let me like give you an example. Goulston would yeah. be one who, if he had power, would do the right thing? Yes. Hmm. Interesting. He wouldn't live long. <laughs> but I think he would. But, uh, yeah. No, I, I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I think he would. Now, we, we you dealing with good and bad. Yeah, so you, you can call me day. naive, but I think he would do good. Well, I mean, you had. Let, let, me, oh, let me give you this example. Scott Kinney is another white guy, a.k.a. DJ Ski. So you're saying you know three Caucasian I'm males them. that would be stand up and just. DJ Ski, the, mu- the guy who owns this place. He ain't got AC in here and you can't park if you're doing the show. <laughs> but he gave me my own channel. Mm. Because you are going to make him more money than he can imagine. You come with something. Of Everybody course. don't get their own channel. But this is Zoe. Zoe comes with this. He comes with a following. It ain't because you, oh, I love Zoe. He's a nice guy. Nah, fuck that. He's capitalizing off you. And don't ever think. That is anything other than that, brother Zoe. I think the man's a good man. We've I, had conversations. I think you're getting I think I'm you getting naive. what you bring to the table confused with that shit you talking about. Cause if you think <laughs> that this motherfucker a good motherfucker, I ain't seen nothing but sucker shit when it comes to mm. dealing with how it goes. Who the fuck make it where the people who work here ain't got nowhere to park? That don't sound like no stand-up motherfucker. Hey. You ain't even got a park. You parked in the red. I'm behind you. <laughs> the fuck is you talking about this a good motherfucker? That's actually a parking spot. Okay, well, I took it anyway. <laughs> see? You, you see? That's a parking spot. It's it, not according to whatever. They, they got red in that damn parking spot. But, so I don't want to give I'm up the is, secrets of parking around here. I understand you got a, <laughs> you got a job and you work for him. But... To me, it's no coincidence he wanted the good white folks you know. But he is. <laughs> I'm just saying. You work is. for him. But I'm saying I know him. I don't give a fuck if you, you know, know him. You work for him. <laughs> but you know I'm not going to vouch for somebody that's on some bullshit. You work for him. You no, ain't no, finna no, no, uproot no. all hold your on, shit. Hold on, Pim. Okay, I'm sorry. If I, if I went too far, let me hold know. Oh, Motherfucker, motherfucker that ain't got parking spots for his employee. <laughs> Give a fucking fucking man and me. That's I got a parking spot right in the front, Corey. You park right behind me. Okay, well, your parking spot, my parking spot, because I'm on your ass fitting in that spot. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, you know, three good white motherfuckers? His boss happened to be one of them. No, to who the fuck that shit. You know what I'm saying. His boss happened to be one of the good white folks he know. Get the fuck out of here. Nigga. Hey, I oh, know shit. people outside oh, of just shit. working. I don't just uh, work for anybody. We hear most. Hear most. We hear most. <laughs> hey, wait. You, you hear Chris in the background. We hear boss. Right. <laughs> He's sick, boss. Defending He's right. boss. But, but so, so you have to think about that. You know, look, fuck that shit. You my man. I got real love for you. But how the fuck is your boss one of the good white people you know? Because I know him outside of this work situation. We've had conversations. Oh, has he? You had a conversation with him. Uh Uh-oh, Black Black Rob wants to jump in. (laughs) Conversations. I just I just want to ask you this, Zoe. Um, if he fired you tomorrow, would you still Mm. consider him? One of the cool white dudes that you know? Because, nigga, you 50, and you only named three people. I'm 50. Damn. Well, damn near. I'm but saying you this, way too this, old to only know uh, three on, white people out of all the white folks you've met. <laughs> hold on. And one of them oh, niggas is a nigga. One of them is his uh, boss. Right. Wait. You, you under his employ. Wait, hold on. Black Black Ron. Now, I got to jump into this, because that was some front porch. Experience was hacked, nigga. A couple weeks ago, nigga, was it you? Are you in my motherfucking shit? Do you know my birthday, nigga? I'm just saying. This nigga said I was 50. Well, I mean, like I ain't 50. He, he, he 49 and a half. I ain't even that, nigga. <laughs> no, a little younger than me. I said that to say, you you in the generation older than me. You you come from the generation like Corey, and then they've got OG Bobby that's in the generation before y'all. So, I'm in my 30s. 
And I can name a bunch of people that are quote unquote nigga lovers, but just like the brother said right here, when it comes time to put shit on the line, they gonna back up off of that. Cause they not finna give up their life or their livelihood for some niggas that they like. And I think that what you really just said is, you know some nice white dudes, not some good ones. Ah! But do you know the white dudes that I call good? Do you know them personally? To be able to to be able to discern the difference between nice and good. Well, that's what that's exactly what I'm asking you because good is not what you do for a person. Good is who you are on the inside. That's what I'm it's saying. A, it's a lot of um. What was the old boy that used to own the Clippers? Donald Sterling. Donald, it's a bunch of Donald Sterling white dudes out here. Yeah. They'll shake hands. They'll take pictures. But John, and Donald this, Sterling was an outright racist. No, he was very clear about no, that. No, this is what I'm saying. Am I lying, Bobby? No, in public, he, he was very clear. No, he, the, yeah, the, he the Asian girl exposed the him. Boy, exactly. No, no, no. In L.A., we knew that he wasn't shit because he had the motherfucking slum apartments, the slum right. buildings that he was constantly getting brought up on charges for. We knew he wasn't shit. By and large, Everybody NBA knew that. owners, NFL owners, all of them seem like nice guys. But is what the fuck they doing to black athletes good? Yeah, I like this. Say more. You feel what I'm saying? The white politicians like your Bernie Sanders and shit that come out and say things that, that attract the black ear. But then they get behind closed doors and put in policies that keep us in last place. Are they nice or are they good? I it's like nice it. to be nice. It's cool for a photo op and shit. But if the things that you are always doing are going to always keep white folks in first place, then you're not a good white man. So this is why I love this show because the whole point is to put ourselves in uncomfortable positions and discuss, right? That's why I love this show. Again, I'm, I'm going to put it out there. I believe that there are some good white folk. And I know the distinction between a nice white person and a good one. And I know the distinction between a white person who wants to capitalize off of your talent and make money off of you and and use you, basically. Right. I know the difference between those kind of people. Those are people, you know, it ain't just white and black. They're black people like that, too. Correct. What do you mean? Oh, people like what? <laughs> that will that will capitalize off of you. That will take advantage of you. Yeah, that will see your weakness and same, take advantage. I'm not, not in, saying they're in the same position. What I'm saying is, it's not the same thing. A, a, a foul motherfucker is a foul motherfucker, and I have matured to a point where I could see the difference in any race. It's a lot of hippity hoppity ass white boys out here who smile, kick it, run, and fuck black. Quit. Mm. But trust me, if you put the motherfucking Corey Hoka microscope on them motherfuckers, I can bring the demon out. Because when I am around somebody Caucasian and they kicking it with me or they smiling with me, the first thing I do is stop. I'll be like, what the fuck is this? Because this ain't how it go. I am in position now where I'm working with a Caucasian man. Right. And in the past, he robbed me. Mm. And you working with him again? Yes. Because, see, you remember at the beginning of the show? I said you got to go through the fire? Mm. Let me tell you something. I walked away from this man at a time when I could have been one of these on TV niggas. Because mm. they was liking me. They felt like I was talented or whatever. But... Before I had went through the fire, I let my emotions rule. Mm. And when I got fucked, I was like, motherfucker, woo, 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 woo. As I walk into this situation now, I know mm. the language. Mm. I know what you're trying to do to me. And I'm bold enough to mm. say it in the beginning. Mm. So let's play this who going to get fucked game with the knowledge I got now. In fact, it feels mm. good watching him try to figure out what I know now. Right. You get what I'm saying? Right. And it ain't gotta be it ain't gotta be emotions. Cause I already know mm. you're gonna get me the right. first time I relax. Mm. So as you talk about So you say you gotta do business with him. And then you gotta I don't take have to. But what, what I'm saying is you gotta take the L when you do, when you make the choice to do business. 
You got to prepare for the L, which may be coming or may not be coming, but you need to be prepared. You have to have a contingency plan for that. Well, you know what? A motherfucker who you've been to war with got respect for your skills in war. Ah. You know what I'm saying? I done been to war with this man, and this man then called me back because the people say, well, where the fuck is Corey Holcomb? Mm. Right. They not dumb at all. They, mm, I can yeah, make yeah. money with yeah, this motherfucker. Yeah. Let me see what the fuck Corey doing now. Yeah. Let me mend this motherfucking thing. Yeah. And I'm the same way. Let me see. Yeah. Well, what's the name doing that? You still on that shit you used to run? Right. Because if you still doing it like that, I know I can't do business with you. But if you open to sit down and negotiate with me and my people, maybe we can get something done. Right. So but when you first fuck with white motherfuckers, you be so scared you're going to lose your job. You ain't got the courage to even right. talk to them like that. Right. So what is the criteria? But when you've been through what he said, the Jim Crow. See, I've been through the little so-called right. Jim Crow where I had to build it on my own. You know, Zo. I know. I mean, mm. you ain't seen it all, but you've seen I've enough seen where I'm yeah. like, I do my own shit. Mm. Fuck what motherfuckers talking mm. about. And now everywhere I go, I got motherfuckers. Hey, Corey Hope, 5150, all this shit. It ain't on no network or nothing. Right. It's just some shit that I built myself. Mm. So if business is not personal, but it's racial, it's not personal, but it's racial, what does that mean? You, you, you have an idea of what I'm talking about? You say business is not personal, it's racial? But it's racial, right? Get in here, get in here, because that's this is what I'm this is what I'm leaning towards. That means you have to be pragmatic. I was uh, listening to a Jewish dude speak, and he was saying uh, the problem that we have as black people is we enter into business deals with an emotional mindset. He said his business partner is his cousin. He can't stand his fucking cousin, but him and his cousin make millions together. Fucking niggas over. Whereas black folks, uh. because we came from an era where we had to rely on doing business with each other, we treated doing business with each other like personal relationships. Now, here it is. You got black folks these days that want to enter into a business with trying to make friends with people you do business with, yeah. which is why when the business goes sour, yeah. you feel doubly fucked. Yeah. You feel like your friend fucked you over yeah. instead of a person you do business with. Mm. Ain't nobody now, I, from another race tell me shit about black people oh, in my absolutely. face. If you ain't been around absolutely. us, don't speak on it, homie, because you don't know what it is. Absolutely. You, you speaking from the sideline. And I make sure I tell them that because yeah. that's another thing absolutely. what happens when you get around white people when they get comfortable with you. See, you guys, no, oh, you don't man, know, man, motherfucker. Man. You ain't man. here. You ain't man. living it. I'm in it. So now, watch this. In other words, if you just wait, got wait. invited to the barbecue, Absolutely. don't say shit about the potato They can't sack. hear you. you. If you're going to say it, you got to say it on the mic. I said, in other words, if you just got invited to the barbecue, you can't say shit about the potato salad. Now, here's the, here's the other angle. How do you establish respect boundaries? If you're going to do business with white folk, how do you create boundaries of respect? See, because we got a lot of ignorant motherfuckers watching us right now who don't understand the depth of this conversation, the layers and the subtleties and the nuance of this conversation. Okay. We got black and white thinking ass motherfuckers. I am a strategist. Yeah, playing chess. So uh, there's chess being played here. How do you establish boundaries to where you're respected you get what you want they get what they want and you get out of the situation unscathed how do you do that when doing business with so-called white folk that might not be sensitive to your culture because most white people need cultural education when it comes to black people just like police officers need to be educated on the on the on the community that they're policing. There are a lot of white people in business situations, in work situations, corporate situations that need to be educated on the culture of the black people that work with them. How do you create boundaries where you not disrespected as a man? No, go ahead. See, in the animal kingdom, it's more direct. Mm -hmm. When you're at the watering hole, Motherfuckers ain't bullshitting. 
I'm talking about the Bears. Amongst the Bears. They have walks. Like, look, I'm yeah. just getting some water, motherfucker. Don't fuck with me. It's looks. When dogs yeah. ain't playing, yeah. they like, they, they be real still. They tail yeah. me up. Yeah. They Sometimes they even do this. They let you know. But when you talking to another human, you might not be mm. able to do it exactly like the animal. But right. your body language and your words right. let motherfuckers That's know right. what they could pull with That's you. That's right. Straight up. That's real. You, when you are talking to a motherfucker about a contract, your life, yeah. and by the way, contracts can be broken because they got it like that. But I'm saying for the most part, some shit they'll carry out just because it ain't worth going to war over. You have to make sure they understand you're not talking to a, <laughs> yeah, right. I see That's what right. you mean. <laughs> yeah, man. <That's> right. <laughs> no. Right. No, don't be that type of motherfucker, especially when you're talking to a motherfucker of another race when it comes to negotiations of your piece of the pie. You cannot let them motherfuckers see you are passive right. when it comes to what That's you right. want. You got to be like That's at right. the watering hole. Right. I come to get this. That's right. Now, what the fuck we going to do? Exactly. If you ain't that motherfucker, man, they going to fuck you over. I find this out the hard way by yeah. losses. Mm. Right, right. We going to go, Ron. Bobby, and then Tahuti. Step one, quit fucking smiling all the goddamn time. Niggas always got to be jovial, eyes bucked, teeth gleaming. Like Corey just said, in the animal kingdom, showing your teeth is a sign of aggression. Yeah. Anytime an animal bears his teeth, that's ready to fight. Yeah. Where in the black community, we show our teeth all the time to show white folks that we not a threat. Quit fucking smiling all the time. If you conduct your face with seriousness, yeah. they're going to hold the meeting that way. That's right. Second of all, stop hanging with people you do business with in non-business right. settings. That's right. We can't go to Top Golf together. We can't go get no beer. We can't go watch the game because you're going to get lax. That's right. And you're going to say some shit that I'm going to have to eat in order to keep this business deal alive. That's right. But if you keep it just business, we only fuck with each other between 9 to 5, and on business mm. only, they mm. can't disrespect you. Look mm. at that. I like that. That's Go right. ahead. At the end of the day, there's no business like more business. <laughs> and simply by saying that, I mean this. If we are able to generate revenue and then use that revenue to become powerful and include the military component. In other words, we need to pay for security of our people so that everybody know if you mistreat some of our people, then somebody is going to have to, you know, deal with that. Right. Right. We keep leaving in it other, out. In other words, I, you're I not dealing with it. Like you said. But what I, I see what you're saying, Bobby. What you're oh. saying is we're not dealing with it. Let me ask you a question with, real quick. Like, you said, oh, where do we get it? Oh, let me finish now, and then I'll come right to you. I'm, you right there. You saying you're not dealing with a person, you're dealing with a community. So if you do something to this person from our community, there's going to be retribution. Retribution. Yeah. Got you. In kind. Now, 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 address what you was going to address with Corey. Corey said, uh, "Where does the security come from? It's already, it, it, it's there already. We got a large population of people who have been trained by them, some of the best killers in the world, and with the resources, we let folks know." This person here is in our hire. His only job is when you do some bullshit, you might get one from 500 feet. Right. Nation of Islam was a great example of that. Tootie. In all due honesty, Zoe, I never really had that problem because, I mean, if you follow me going back to the early 2000s, I've said it all. Black people, white people, global, it just doesn't matter. I've never really given a fuck about putting that content out there. So I've never had a problem with white people and, and, and boundaries, barriers, what have you, because what you see is what you get. So they know that coming in the door. So like I said, to this day, it's 50 percent us and 50 percent them. Right. And, and, you know, I don't switch shit up, man. My shit is raw, whether it's on Twitter, the, my article, the old YouTube video. What you see is what you get. Right. Now, let me I agree with every <clears throat> single solution that brothers one through four have contributed to this discussion. I'm going to throw mine on top of that. I play chess in real life. There's a reason I mentioned the owner of Dash. Mm. In real life, motherfuckers, 
How in the fuck do I get to talk the way I talk on this channel? Drop the jewels we drop on this channel in the way we do. It couldn't exist nowhere else. It couldn't exist nowhere else except for 5150. You got to do what Corey is doing in order yeah. to talk the way we talking like this. Uh, yeah. I'm doing this shit in here. Here's another layer of how you get their respect. You can't be like a millennial. Most millennials aren't as skilled. You have to have a skill set that's high to where you become to white folk in a lot of ways indispensable. There's a reason I go, ah, shit, I might not agree with what he's saying. I, I might not like the timbre, the tone, whatever, but he better than everybody. And he got this entire motherfucker on fire. Not just himself, but the other shows he's bringing in. You got niggas sitting in here who watch this show for free that can't talk the way I talk in real life. Talk about Zoa Coon. You can't say shit to the crew chief manager that's running <laughs> at McDonald's, <laughs> nigga. Get your ass back on fries. <laughs> <laughs> on the internet, everybody can be a gangster. Everybody mm. G on in the chat room. Mm. I talk like this everywhere. Yeah. I talk like this in board meetings. Mm. To the, I talk like this everywhere. Do you understand? And what? all I'm saying about dealing with white folk, number one, if you have no self-respect and you thirsty, they're going to take advantage of you. If you have no self-respect and you're thirsty and their opportunity is the answer for your life, they're going to take advantage of you. You understand, dig? That's all. At the end of the day, I come in here, they go, what the fuck is Zoe talking about? They listen, and then you know what they say? That's the best commentary I've heard on this shit ever. Get out of his way. No notes. No, hey, Zoe, could you turn this down? Could you? None of that. You know why? Because I'm the authentic me all the motherfucking time. See, if you real with yourself and you own your own shit, and like you said, That's it don't motherfucking say. matter yeah. what anybody got to say to you or about you or in evaluation of you. That's the key. Bruce Pearl told my son when he was recruiting him, oh, we're evaluating you. And just know the evaluation process never ends. Fortunately, I was there with him to say, fuck what they think. You continue to be new. You continue to develop who you are. But far too many of us are dependent on their end grade of us. I'm not. I created my own shit. I, I can honestly say this. I'm not saying that this is a fact. I'm saying, but from what I've seen, right. I've never met a white motherfucker that's just. Not one. The closest thing I've seen to a white motherfucker that seemed like he got some motherfucking, real motherfucking respect for a uh, uh, human life is Father Flagger out of like Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. Chicago. Yeah. I, I ain't never seen him fall. But, but I'm saying. But you're making out the, the point that they mm -hmm. do exist. I believe that 100%. And for anybody white that I know that might hear this and want to challenge me on it, do that. <laughs> Motherfucker, I'm not saying this to be mean. Every one of you motherfuckers got me. But let me say this on top of that. Please don't forget to add this shit on too. 
Most of the niggas I know done got me too. Because this is an unjust world. And I blame it on the leadership. And, and, and that's a fair assessment. That's a fair assessment. But I'm saying, you want to be respected? It start with you. We have to remember that capitalism is the child of slavery. And slavery, some wicked shit happened. You see, so that's in capitalism. So capitalism will fuck you over. Capitalism will enslave you. All the stuff that took place during slavery will take place in capitalism, in business. So you can talk about the the ball players and the millions of dollars, but that's why you have a book called Forty Million Dollar Slaves. Right, right. You dig? Right. Slavery. But, But again, again. Create your own opportunity so their opportunity don't look so good. We, we, we have a great chance to do a lot of stuff today if we go back and connect from the past. We dropped the ball in the past on the defensive level. You see, a lot of people don't know why Chicago has so much violence going on. All you hear about is Chicago, 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 Chicago. Chicago is a major fucking gun hub man for drugs man chicago is the center barack's hometown that is the center the same thing they did in watts back in 1965 but we want to turn a blind eye black people the gun gun who bring them the damn guns man european history repeats itself all day long how many of you motherfuckers out there right now is 2300 motherfuckers in the chat room watching this show live how many of you motherfuckers bit your tongue at work not Most just that work. Because they feel like they ain't ready to jump out there in that darkness. That's my point. <laughs> yes, I That's my point. I do my own. Listen, how many of you motherfuckers live in a world? I'm talking to the brothers that's watching the show, that's listening to the show. How many of you live in a world to where you you you, you don't have to capitulate? The problem is, though, the people that we've deemed our black leaders don't have the nuts necessary to teach black uplift. Who is a black leader? Your clergymen, your 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 esteemed celebrities, your your foremost media. They were chosen by white folks. They were chosen by white folks, but more so than that, endorsed by black folks. I don't even your use Steve Harvey's, your TD Jakes's, yeah. and the, and when the list, what have you. It all boils down to one word: integrity. And I'm gonna Mo- say this because we at the end of the show, Ron. Mm. I know you trying to jump in and shit. You're late, brother. All the motherfuckers been bought. <laughs> let Let me just tell you this. Do business with people that have the capacity to recognize your quality as a being, as a human being, as a person. Not everybody has that capacity. Don't settle to do business with people because you got to pay a bill. Listen, motherfuckers get mad at me. I don't mind not paying a bill. I just got to be. You know what kind of pressure motherfuckers is on to keep up these bills? I don't mind defaulting. Nigga, the U.S. got a trillion dollars in debt. Do you understand? I don't mind defaulting on a bill. So I'm not under that kind of pressure. I don't care. I really don't. Sure, I'll get back to you later. I, In order to keep my integrity, I will not pay a bill. I need niggas to understand that. So this is why I'm not afraid to speak how I speak. I'm not afraid to speak out when I need to. The under dig? That's why I'm in the position I'm in. <laughs> There's a lot of niggas in here criticizing, but they can't talk freely. Not at home around a woman. How much time or, we got? Oh, Do we got 30 seconds? Right after I finish. Not at home around a woman and not around a boss. Yeah. I speak freely all day long, unencumbered, uninterrupted. Corey? Everything that's said on the internet is said by somebody who is texting some shit that really doesn't have consequence. Most motherfuckers ain't Mm. even got a name behind Mm. that shit. Mm. So there's nothing that can move me on the internet. Mm. Motherfuckers send my wife shit to try to start shit at my Mm. house. But we both laugh at that shit, goddammit, because we, motherfucker, I'm going to find a way to get it. (laughs) When the motherfucker through talking, I'm going to find a way to get it. Hey, listen, we're going to say it again, man. We don't have all the answers, but we do know how to start the discussion. Please keep it cracking. You know what I mean?
please keep it cracking. Please keep the conversation going, man. Find a good white person. It's like a four-leaf clover. Go look for it. Find it. <laughs> Find Good one. Luck with that shit. <laughs> I got love for y'all. We appreciate everybody for tuning in. Corey, no more snacks in the studio. All right, and no more motherfucking white friend bolts, nigga. <laughs> we appreciate y'all. Hey, holla at us. Follow us. All right? Deuces. That motherfucker will be like, don't have him back up here no more. Zone. He can't come back. That guy's incendiary. <laughs>